This is the HR02. It is big and heavy and it is made by Thermalrite. They are advertising this as a fanless CPU cooler. So they're saying that you can actually run many of today's modern high performance CPUs fanless, completely passive, as long as you have some case airflow with this particular heatsink. So let's take a look at it. The first thing we find is a thermal rate sticker. Then we have an installation guide, which shows us a view of how to uh, attach all of the different mounting brackets. It does include mounting for uh, 775, 1366, 1156, as well as AM2, as I recall. Uh, let me just, uh, I'll, we'll double check that when we get to the actual hardware. Okay, so here's the included mounting hardware. You can see this is clearly for AM2, and then this is clearly a multi-installation kit for Intel. All right, let's see what we got first. Look at this, it comes with a screwdriver. Check that out. Chrome vanadium. I, I, okay, I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Vanadium, vanadium. Neat, it's a screwdriver. M magnetic, hey, it's magnetic too, look at that. Do we have anything to test it on around here? Okay, here, here, yeah, yeah, here's a PCI backlight. Uh, it's not very magnetic. Okay, well, that's okay. You still get a free screwdriver with your heatsink purchase. That is a compelling bundle offering. Okay, mounting hardware. I'm gonna need my handy dandy tech tips knife, which I now actually have. There we go. That is officially open now. So in here we will find a variety of things. We've got some rubber grommets. We have some fan clips. We have some thermal compound, CF3. Next we have a wrench. You get a wrench and a screwdriver. You get like a tool kit with this thing. And then we have the AM2 mounting hardware, also AM3. And then we have the uh, multi backplate for Intel. So uh, here, yeah, 775, 1156, and 1366. All right, let's look at the heatsink itself since that's the most interesting part of this video. Other than me, of course. Nah, I'm kidding. I know the heatsink's the most interesting part. So this is the HRO2, and it has a couple of unique design elements. So we'll get started here once I finally have it out of the bag. That thing is huge. So first of all, it has a boatload of heat pipes. You can see it's actually got six full U-shaped heat pipes. So that's tw almost 12 effective heat pipes when you look at how they're all attached to the base. It's a very, very shiny, flat looking base. And we'll do the obligatory finger shot that everyone and their dog seems to be determined to complain about, but I don't really care. All right, so you can see, first of all, that this heatsink has a very, very wide spacing for the fins. That's because it does rely on passive cooling. So that means when this is installed on your socket, okay, so let's say hypothetically it's installed like this, it relies on the heat that is generated by the heat pipes transferring heat to the fins to simply heat the air and then the air will rise out of it or be pulled slowly by a case fan and that's it. That's the only force you have. So that's why the fins need to be spaced really wide so that it doesn't take a lot of pressure to push the air through it. Now, besides the wide spacing of the fins, you can see what Thermal Wright's done is they've actually used their little, um, I don't know if they actually even have a name for this, but what they've done is they've cut little holes and bent up the flaps in every one of the aluminum layers here. And that gives us just a little bit more surface area. So based on that, so you can see that's all the way through the heat sink, I would probably recommend mounting this heat sink this way, either this way or this way, because that's gonna mean that, I mean, heat rises. So it means that you're giving the air less resistance to rise up through the heat sink and cool your CPU. Now this hole right here is probably why you need the screwdriver. That's how you're going to uh, screw it in if you're using an AM2 uh, socket. So that's positioned right there for that. And then on the other side, you can reach it quite a bit more easily. That's one of the considerations when you're building a heat sink this big is how do you actually access the mounting hardware and uh, so people can actually attach it to their motherboard. Cameraman's giving me his iPhone for the usual scale shot. So you can see compared to an iPhone, it would crush it. Ah, it's quite a bit bigger and heavier. Okay, so there it is from the side. And let's just have a closer look at how they've attached the, uh, the heat pipes down here at the bottom. So it's six heat pipes alternating. So some of them go over to this side of the heat sink 
and the others just go straight up in a straight U shape. So all six of them are aligned at the same level. I've actually seen some coolers where some of the heat pipes are a little bit higher and I don't know what that would do in terms of thermal transfer but this way they're all as close as possible to the CPU without touching directly and I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about the HRO2. I'm actually kind of curious to try this one out and see, uh, see how well it can do on even like a, a Core i7 or something like that. It's very heavy though. <laughs>